Hi, welcome to my build of uh, Piper Cub J3. Um, I'm getting quite close to the end now and I'm, I'm thinking about some of those finishing touches like a cowl. I need to build a cowl for this um, because I'm building it from a plan. Um, there is no cowl available that I know of at the right size. Um, and anyway, I kind of want to build one myself. Um, so the information that I've got to go off is I've got the size of the back plate uh, or the fire, where it goes up against the firewall. Um, I've got a side view and, uh, and I've also got a plan. So I've got three kind of things to, to go from that will help me. Um, I'm going to try and make a, a, perhaps a plastic one, but I'm also going to make a balsa one first. So we'll see how it goes. I'm not sure which way this is going to go and how it's going to finish up. But I'll show you what I've started to do. I've, uh, I've cut out a number of pieces of balsa, um, which are the same shape as, or slightly larger than the nose uh, cal, um, slightly larger than I need. I cut these out with a, a, a fret saw, um, rather roughly, but um, they're big enough that I can sand them down. So I've done nine of these. Uh, to give me um, the side view and enough um, width to actually carve out um, the, uh, the, the shape from the top. Um, what I've also done is I've actually um, cut out the centre of some of these. So I've got the first two which are whole and then I've taken out um, progressively more Originally I was thinking I would try and take out more than that, um, but I'm slightly worried I'll, I'll take out too much. So um, I've got a start there for hollowing out and I can use a gouge. The idea is that I'm going to make um, a balsa uh, cowl, um, but then I will, once I've sanded it to shape, I will probably have a go at making a, a, a plastic cowl um, I've got a, a quite a large um, pot bottle which I can use to shrink around it. Um, but I'm also thinking I'll make a, a, a balsa one as well. And I'll see which one works out best and, uh, and which one I like. So I've glued all of my 10mm pieces of, of balsa together and I've created this, uh, this block which is going to form the basis of my, uh, of my cowl. Um, if you remember this was the side view I got off the plan um, and you can see that conforms to the shape. But now we need to start um, shaping it in relation to the plan view from the top and this was the, uh, this was the shape that I, I got off the plan. And I've also put the, um, the shape of the firewall um, on the back here so I can see what shape that's going to be. So I've got a, a rough idea of, of, of what I need to cut out now. I've found that probably the easiest way is to um, use this, uh, the, this knife and take off um, fairly decent slices um, going from the centre down and then turning over and going from the centre down. I didn't want to go all the way through because I couldn't control accurately the angle. Um, that it was going, uh, it was it would go through the balsa. So I went down and just took off thin slices like like this. Each just checking that I'm not taking off too much. But now I've got where I'm actually getting quite close to the line where I want to be. I've actually started using my uh, my balsa plane, my David plane. Um, I've done a review of this actually. If you want to have a look on my um, uh, on my YouTube channel. But anyway. This is, is great for just, whereas the knife I could take chunks off and it would, could take quite a dig in and take quite a lot off, this is fairly, uh, fairly consistent. Um, so it's, uh, it's a, lot, a lot safer when you, get, um, when you get close to the line. So I will get on and do this now and uh, we'll come back later when this is... Uh, has been shaped up and we'll see how it's gone. Um, I've, I've got this plug which I'm quite happy with, the shape uh, and the size. Um, and I, I did try and, and heat shrink a plastic uh, bottle over it 
but the bottle was just a little bit too small. So I tried putting a bit of a slit in it where I knew I would need to cut out for the engine. Um, but it all went horribly wrong. The bottle started to split as it shrank and it, it just, it, it wasn't pleasant. So, um, I've decided, bit of thought, I'm going to try and make um, uh, a fiberglass one. So, I'm moving on from the, the shrink plastic onto fiberglass, so stick with me and, uh, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, this plug, um, I've just wanted to seal it um, for starters. So I've just given it a coat of, I've got this uh, Zap Epoxy 30 minutes and I've just mixed that with a, a little bit of ethanol to thin it down, a bit like a finishing resin. I'm about to start making um, a, a plaster cast of my uh, wooden nose plug. Um, I've screwed the plug to a piece of 3mm ply um, with some um, fairly shiny plastic coated card in between just to sort of help it so it doesn't, uh, the plaster doesn't stick. Um, so that's very secure. Um, I've put uh, petroleum jelly as a releasing agent, as thin as I can, smeared it um, over the plug and also around the base, and particularly this seam around here, so the uh, plaster of Paris doesn't seep underneath. Um, I'm dropping the, the plug and the card into the box which I'm going to use to pour the plaster in. I've tried to make it so there's not too much waste, but it's thick enough to, um, to be nice and strong. Um, one of the things which I'm really mindful of is I don't want to pour the plaster in and the plug floats up. It's a pretty tight fit, so I don't think it will, but I'm going to put a couple of screws in the base here that will go into that 3mm ply and just hold it secure. Now, the box uh, is a cardboard box, uh, it's plastic coated, fairly shiny, so I don't think it's going to leak, but I'm not totally sure. So um, I'm just going to put, put it in a plastic bag and, and just wrap it around uh, with a little bit of tape, just in case we get some seepage. I've now got my plaster of Paris mould, uh, which I'm very pleased with. The, uh, the balsa plug that I made, um, because it's tapered, actually came out very easy. I was very pleased. I've done the same thing with the, uh, with the epoxy to seal it and uh, a very, very thin coat of the petroleum jelly. Um, so hopefully we won't see any marks. And now I'm going to be putting in this uh, very fine uh, fiberglass. And then once I've done a single coat of that, I've got some thicker fiberglass which I'm going to be using um, to add a little bit more, more strength. Um, and then I will um, see how it goes from there. I'm not sure how many coats I'm going to do. Once I've done a thin coat and a thick coat, I'll probably take it out and see how strong it is and maybe then just work on the inside. I might even put a band of wire just to strengthen it. I, I, I don't know um, because there's cutouts going to be needed. Um, so I need to think about that once I've got it out. Uh, so let's get on with that now and we'll see how it goes. Okay, well here I have my uh, fiberglass nose cowl, um, which uh, I took out yesterday after it had gone hard, and I'm really pleased with the way that's looking. Um, it took a little bit of pulling out of the mould, but, but came out pretty easily. I, I was quite pleased. Um, I think because this is um, sort of fairly flexible, this poxy, it did allow some movement, um, so it would... Uh, would, would come out easier than if it was really uh, really hard and brittle. So I, I'm really pleased with that. Um, the, the finish is nice. Um, I think just making sure I'll put on the um, petroleum gel, the releasing agent thinner, uh, really paid off. There's a couple of little holes in the top here um, which I'll probably just need to fill either with a, a bit of epoxy or, or some filler. Um, to be honest, this one might be taken out um, because I need to cut this out um, to, uh, to fit the engine, uh, to fit over the engine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do just a little bit more um, uh, fiberglassing, uh, particularly around the edge here uh, where it's going to attach onto the, uh, the front of the plane, just to make that a little bit stronger. Um, and, and perhaps just down this side where it looks a little bit thin. It's kind of a trade-off. I, I, I want to make it you know, as strong as I can, but I don't want to add weight to it. 
Well, I've now uh, finished, more or less finished the, the cowl, except for the, the final paint job and, and just perhaps a little bit of a roughing up before that. Um, I don't think there's any filling I need to do. I think it's all fairly nice and smooth, but yeah, uh, perhaps a little bit of sanding around the edges. Um, in the previous uh, little bit of video, I said I was going to strengthen it and then cut out the, the, the holes that I needed. Um, actually, I did it the other way around. I thought, what's the point in putting fiberglass in areas where I may well be cutting it out? So, I cut out why it was still a little bit more flexible, which helped with the mounting. Um, so I've cut out for the engine and for the, uh, the drive shaft. Um, and, uh, and then I've, I've strengthened this. It was quite flexible along the top. Um, added a little bit more weight, but it's still quite light. It's about 60 grams. So I'm kind of pleased with that, really. I think, um, I, I think it's strong enough and, um, and, and it's quite flexible. So I think if it does take a knock, it won't necessarily um, break. Um, I've mounted the engine now, which I hadn't done before. But I, um, I did that as part of the, uh, of the fitting of the cowl and the, the cutting of the slots out. When I was, just as I was mounting the engine, I noticed that the, um, the, the, the mounting timbers um, weren't actually uh, completely flat with each other. So I ran a, a sanding block across and I've, I've got those dead flat now. So it's not putting any um, undue pressure on the, uh, on the engine lugs. Um, I've put on... Um, mounting blocks here, here or, or uh, screwing blocks so I'm going to put a screw through three locations and on the top there's just sort of a locating uh, piece of balsa there I'm not going to screw into that because it'll be right on top and uh, and very visible and, and I don't really think it, it, it's needed um, the cowl is a snug fit I'm hoping I don't have to trim it anymore um, but to get it to 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 fit on you have to take out the uh, the glow plug um, also the prop nut and the needle valve so it's not something you can do um, quickly um, like I say it's quite a snug fit um, just have to pull it a little bit over the cylinder head and then just tease it round uh, the needle valve assembly um, and then it just locates onto those uh, four pieces of wood and uh, and there that's that's on solid now once I've got the three screws in um, that won't be going anywhere like I say that's about as snug as I could get it um, and there should be plenty of cooling with the fins um, and the head outside and also the uh, the silencer the, the, the muffler it's a real relief uh, to get this finished because uh, it's been a bit of a, a journey and I, I did wonder uh, whether I was going to end up with anything suitable at the end, but um, I'm quite pleased with that. Um, it's 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 turned out uh, it's turned out okay.